Good evening everybody and welcome to this Dad Rail stream doing a twilight shift on the new Glossop DLC. We will be starting in around about 9 minutes time at 20.30. Please have your drinks and light refreshments ready for the start of the stream at... Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap. Pro9 has become a member. Thank you very much, Pro9. We will be starting this live stream in five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Five minutes for the start of the Glossop release day live stream.
Passengers are reminded that smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. This includes e-cigarettes. This is your final call for boarding, ladies and gentlemen. This stream will be starting in one minute. This is your final call. Please have your drinks, light refreshments, tea and biscuits ready. We will be starting in one minute. How are we all doing tonight? So great to have you here. Welcome to the release day stream of the Trains in World free new Glossop line. Uh, I've done a couple of videos on this. I was allowed to release some content on it yesterday, so I did do a review video, route learning video, and uh, play on the guard shift. But as is customary with new releases, we are, of course, going to have a live stream um, on the route. Who have we got in tonight? Pro9, thank you very much for becoming a member. Uh, DET Trains, Pig and Bob, Sam Brooks, Reggie's Transport Videos, Officially Charles, Johnny Simulator Gaming, GJ Barnard, Airbus AV Geek, In Space. How are you, Richie? Not too bad. How are you, bud? How are you? Fantastic. Okay. So, before we jump in, and as always, guys, I've got to tell you that all the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own, may not affect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with, blah de blah de blah de blah you know the situation by now. And I've also got to tell you that Dovetail Games have given me this key completely free of charge, however, all the views and opinions uh, are my own, as always. We are going to be having all of our usual features, we are going to be jumping in and out of Discord server... Post your pictures over there in the live stream pictures page. Um, there's a Discord invitation link in the description below. We're also going to be playing our very popular game. You know the one. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. That's the one. Tonight's picture from Loco Class 66. If you haven't seen this game before, then you'll get the hang of it as we go along. We are also going to be having a brand new feature, which is still a work in progress, but it goes something like this. Spot, drive or scrap. We'll get to that a bit later on. Anyway, without further ado, let's press the button here. Jump into Train Scene World 3. So the plan is tonight, we're going to do a rundown from Manchester to Hadfield, um, then 
Hadfield back to Manchester. We're going to do kind of a, a dusky kind of nighttime run um, because the lighting is really, really quite nice. So let's get into that. Um, my Train Scene World 3 did crash when I tried to load it up earlier, so fingers crossed this is going to work. Hey, Daz Smith, how are we doing? Anita Bath, hello. Uh, CEO of the Class 700 says, hi, Mumrail. Uh, Mumrail is in the kitchen, but we have Mumrail's friend behind me. <laughs> Wave Mumrail's friend. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Debbie. Uh, DT Trains, who's behind you, lad? Yeah. Oh, no, no, don't, don't crash on me. Don't crash on me. What have I done? I've pressed the... That's a good start. He doesn't even know how to load the game up, let alone... <laughs> let alone drive a train. Okay, choose a route. Here we go. Gloss at Manchester to Hadfield timetable. Um, I am going to do the 158 at the 66 probably the 20 uh, scenarios over the coming days. But just for today's stream, we're just going to keep it to the uh, the class 3 t free. So, we are going to load up. I have made notes. We are going to load up uh, 2 Golf 3 1. Because the lighting on that is pretty nice. Uh, Manchester Piccadilly Hadfield via Glossop Part 1. Anita Buff, I've been looking forward to this. It's, it's a nice route. It seems to have been pretty well received by the community. We'll jump in and have a play. Let me know, guys, if you want the game audio up or down, the mic level up or down, all of that sort of thing. We can have a play with that um, as we go along. So, DET, you've got the 323 on this route, um, which is the main form of attraction. You've also got the 158 layers. I think there's one or two services on that. Um, you've got a couple of rail tour layers and some railhead treatment train layers as well. So, class 323, 134 tons, free car, 74.5 yards, Manchester Piccadilly to Glossop. We will be calling it Ashbury's, Guide Bridge, Flowery Field, Newton for Hyde, Godley, Hattersley, Broadbottom, Dinting, and Glossop. Okay, we will get the safety systems in. AWS, Vigilance, and TPWS, which I am pleased to say does work on this route. Master Keter on, and... So we do have the function in GSMR radio, which I'm really pleased about. Um, again, the functionality on it is not perfect. It's, it's very much the same as it is in Cross City. So we don't actually need to register the radio or anything ourselves. It, it kind of does it. We don't need to put our head code in or anything else. You can see the registration code comes up automatically. But it, we've got some level of functionality on it, which, which is good. Um, okay, let's get those doors open. Uh, oh, door key. Uh, headlights are all set. We've got a green signal. 2103 for departure. Hey, LazyJet, you renewed your membership. Thank you very much, bud. Much appreciated. Uh, LazyJet, yeah, try not to laugh at broad bottom. I, I think we can manage that. I think we can manage that. Um, Den, I have not played the Steam Rail Tour yet, so I can't comment... Um, I'm not a great fan of the Steam stuff, generally speaking, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, it, it's it's okay, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm just trying to catch up with the chat because there's quite a lot of you in. Hey, LaserJet, thank you very much, bud. Much appreciated. Um... DT, wait, has the 700 come out in Tracy World 3? I've not been catching up with the game. Please, someone let me know. The 700 has not yet been released. No, I, ca I can confirm the 700 has not yet been released. We are eagerly awaiting it, though. Hey, 156 Andrew, how are we doing? Right, we are off to Ashbury's Platform 1. So, if anyone saw the route learning video, I done on this I have my notes so we should be able to drive this fairly well someone was asking earlier how I do the route learning videos and how I do my notes I basically do it as bullet points of all the upcoming features on the route so I, I basically sort of write an instruction manual I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that on there I'll, I'll show you on the large camera screen 
um, a bit later on. But I basically sort of write it in bullet points so I know exactly what's coming up and exactly what I need to be doing. We have sirens as we're leaving Manchester Piccadilly. Is that typical? I should be braking, not accelerating there. <laughs> Running brake test, there we go. Yeah, so the... Uh, I think the route looks quite pretty. I think the lighting uh, is pretty good. The reviews that I've seen so far, it has been quite well received. So if you have seen any other reviews and, and stuff on it, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts. A couple of people have mentioned that the overhead line equipment isn't as good as it could be, that, that it's not as detailed as it was on some of the other routes. And yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with that, I think, a little bit. But I think overall, it's, it's been very well done. Hey, typical Nathan. Yeah, I'm good. How are you, bud? Yeah, DET, hopefully. Hopefully. I've, I've been really, really busy um, just lately, so I am hoping to get back to a couple of times a week at least. Uh, 15600, yeah, I've, I've been to Manchester Piccadilly once, from what I can remember. I, I, I promptly left again. <laughs> I'm told that's the best thing you can do in Manchester is uh, is leave as quickly as possible. <laughs> so we're approaching Ardwick Junction with the lines to Crewe, Chester and Stoke diverge to our right. Uh, Ardwick Station, line speed's going to go up to 40. Hey Penguin, how you doing? Good evening bud. Early E-Bird, yeah I'm good, how are you? Right, check I've got my cab light turned off. Uh, DET, the sky looks magnificent. You have picked the perfect route tonight. Oh, thank you very much. Like I say, guys, let me know if you want the game audio up or down because it's really hard for me to kind of judge the, uh, the levels. Den, would a single class 66 pull a 3,000 ton train? It certainly would pull a 3,000 ton train, Den, but it depends on the gradients on the line. On, on the flat, or on a slight rising gradient, it wouldn't have much of an issue, but if you've got quite a severe gradient, then it would struggle to get it going. Right, so Ashbury Station just coming up. We're looking for the first 60 miles an hour stencil board. That is a pretty good breaking point. Just about there. And we are a free car train. We are heading for the free car mark. Now, one of the criticisms I had on this route was that a lot of the stations don't have stop car markers. But I have since been told that that is very typical. Um, and that is as is in real life on this route. So, uh, for once, I am wrong to complain about the lack of stop car markers. Oh, look at that. Free on the S. We'll take that. Yeah, it does it does look pretty. It does look pretty. Uh Samsung. I've got a joke about that. My mate Sam went to a karaoke night. What brand was the microphone? Samsung. Doesn't get any better than that, guys. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, yeah, Samsung, in answer to your question... Do I play Roblox? Occasionally, yeah. We, we've done some SCR on the channel, some great British railways. Uh, Romney Hive and Dimchurch is on my list to do. Um, yeah, so occasionally we do do some Roblox. A virtual Rail Driver, what a stop. Thank you very much. So the next station on this service will be Guide Bridge. Very funny, Richard. No, DET, in real life, this, this route is not DOO. You would have a conductor on this. And one of the things I've I've banged on about for a long time 
is having an AI conductor, so you actually get the, the, the two on the buzzer as we pull away. <coughs> so th by the driver not having the door responsibility, that being done completely by an AI guard would be really good. Fingers crossed that that is something we're going to see in the future. So we're now approaching Gorton Station. Uh, yeah, good information from Keith Jones there. No northern route is DOO. It's keeping the speed at 60. According to my notes here, we want to shut off at the bridge after Fairfield Station. Step one at the mile post. Okay, well, we'll see how we get on. Let's hold the 60. Yeah, LaserJet, you are right. Midland Mainline does have that feature. Well, I haven't replayed it since they added it to the 158, to be fair. But don't you still have to close the doors on your own? I don't think the doors close automatically, but you do get the two on the buzzer, um, which is a really nice touch. And for me, it's all about adding that immersion and that sort of that level of operational immersion, which, which is really nice that you have got that on there. Exploring all UK stations. Love this route. It's amazing. This station is Fairfield. So according to my notes here, this bridge after the station, we can shut off power and coast from this point here. Let's see how well we do on the stops. Just before it there. We are going to pass under the M60 Manchester Ring Road. Just coming up now. And there is a mile post. Which apparently is our breaking point for Guide Bridge. Just about see that coming up there. So if we drop step one breaking in about now... And hope for the best. Let's see what happens. That seems to be coming in quite slow, actually. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Better that than the alternative. Um, we are running late as well. Ah, oh, there's Mumro. Hello, Mumro. Say hello to the stream. Hi. Right, we are free for the free here at Guide Bridge. Let's see if we can get another decent stop. Hey, Keith Jones. Thank you very much, bud. Much appreciated. Welcome to Level 1 Membership. Yeah, so where, uh, as per the rule book, if there isn't any stop car marks, then you proceed all the way to the end of the platform. Four, three, two. Unlock doors. Doors on the left. Hey, what's going on? No, stop, 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 stop. Hey, why didn't that work? Tea and biscuits is broken. There we go. We fixed it. Right, locked doors. Sam Brooks, you passed another mile post. That may have been the breaking point. Um, you're probably right, Sam, to be fair. My notes are, are inadequate. That'd be tea and biscuits in the sack for that effort. Hey, Jake and the Steam Train Spotter. Welcome to Dead Brown, new subscriber. Great to have you here. So, just after the junction, we're going to go back up to 60. The junction in question goes round to Staley Bridge. 
Next station stop will be Flowery Field. Let's see if we can do Flowery Field Hubless. Let, let's give this a go. Northern Princess Productions, how are we doing? Great to see you. We need a mod dashboard to remotely queue up tea and biscuits. Be permanently queued in. Okay, guys, shall we play a game? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. So let's have your numbers between 1 and 25 in the chat for the first round of tonight's locomotive location and livery. Or locomotive livery location. So holding the 60, our shutting off point is as we come across Hyde Junction just here. This is Hive Junction, sorry, and the station off to the right is Hyde North. Speed's rolling back quite nicely. We are looking for an AWS magnet in the adjacent line. That will bring us in quite nicely. Just about there. Jamie Fares, you are the third number on my screen. So we will be doing number 10 for locomotive location livery as soon as we have stopped at Flowery Field. Little bit of two just to bring it in there. Probably didn't need the two. I should have just left that in one. That could have been a perfect stop. Never mind. We'll take it. We'll take it. There we go. Doors on the left. Okay. Let's play. Locomotive livery location. Okay, guys, if you haven't seen this game before, I'm going to give you box number 10. You've got 10 seconds to give me the locomotive, location, and livery of the picture beneath. Here we go. Uh, that's helpful. This could be the first game of locomotive, location, and livery in history where you don't get it on the first square. But if you do have any ideas, then do, of course, let me know. Hey, Ruben's Random Stuff, new subscriber. Hello and welcome. Okay, we are off to Newton. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting to do the buzzer. Uh, petrified class... Petrified, love it. Class 66 at Leicester. Jamie, where is the train? It's there somewhere. It's there somewhere. Kevin, I know that one. We're doing this hudless, guys. We're going for it. Coming round towards Newton. Uh, old Man Tater. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong there. So the... Basically, if we had a conductor on, which in real life you would do on these trains, once the doors are closed and the train's ready to leave, the conductor would give us two on the buzzer, which is our ready-to-start signal. Um, and then as the driver, we're supposed to repeat that back to the guard. Unfortunately, it's not modelled in-game. The buzzer is, but the actual kind of conductor buzzing it to us isn't modelled in-game. So we have to be creative and do that ourselves. Hey, Wardle Road, 120 hours into my mental hours now. Flying by, fantastic. Pro9, why did you quit being a passenger train driver? Uh, purely because I fancy the change of scenery. I did enjoy driving passenger trains, I just got, I'd been doing it for 7-8 years and I just fancy doing something different. Um, I've got no aversion to it, I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, but yeah, I, I just fancy something different. Lock doors, okay, we're still running late. Uh, 
There we go, we remembered. Buzz, buzz. Jason, thank you very much. Uh, Josh S, yeah, remind me when we get to the end of the run, bud, and I'll put it onto the full screen camera and I'll kind of show you um, what I write down and how my notes work. So, according to my notes, the next station will be Godly. We're going to accelerate to 50, and pretty much as soon as we get to 50, we are going to pop the brakes straight in. It's getting a little bit dark on this run now. Hopefully, um, it doesn't look too bad on the stream. And then into brake step one as we come down to Godly. <laughs> Using brake step three there. Oh, come on. Stop, 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 stop. That's okay. It's on the platform. Doors on the left. I mean, like I say, guys, yeah, do, do give me your thoughts on the route. I I like it. This this to, For me, this is a good route. I like the length of the route. Yeah, I really like the length of the route. It's it's about 40 minute, I think 40, 45 minute run each way. Um, there's enough on it to keep you busy. Uh, for me, it's just... Yeah, it's just, it's just a really nice route to drive. Our next station will be Hattersley. Josh S, I like a good little route and a great for learning. Yeah, definitely. I'm completely with you, Josh, on that one. Grey box on the left is our breaking point for Hattersley. The track does seem to have a little bit of a weird cant on it as we come into Hattersley. Seems a little bit jerky. Oh, we could be on for a perfect stop. There's the free car. No, we're going to need a little bit of brake step too just to bring it in. Free on the free. So as is good practice, guys, if you're doing an offside door release, it needs to go into neutral to stop the DST. If you're doing an offside door release, get up out the seat, open the doors, Physically open the doors on the offside. It's always a good thing to do. Uh, try to catch up with the chat here, guys. Uh, indeed, lots of variation. Yeah, I do like short routes with lots of scenery. We've done that bit. Um, all routes are fun to me these days. Still learning Tracing World 3. Waterloo, Dadra, what traction do you sign at the moment? So my main forms of traction... Uh, well, the only traction I sign is 66s, 73s, 73 nines, and I have the joys of class 69s. Right, let's go. So the next station is Broadbottom. Hey, Davidoff has become a member. Thank you very much, Davidoff. Really appreciated, bud. Next station, Broadbottom. So we have got 114 of you lovely people in tonight. If you haven't already, please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing. Really does help me out. And whilst we're on our way to Broadbottom, let's play another game. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Yes, yeah, so a Pro 9. When I was passenger train driving, as a mainline passenger train driver, I signed the class 375 and 377. That was all I used to drive. Um, before I was mainline, I was a shunt driver. and I used to sign class 375s, 
um, 4.65s, 3.95s, javelins, 3.76s. Um, you used to do a lot more stock, but only sort of in the yard and as far as between the yard and the station. But yeah, as, as a mainline driver, 3.75, 3.77 only. Formula 47, my aunt lives in Broadbottom. The green overbridge there being our breaking point for Broadbottom. Although that does feel a little bit fast. The brakes on the 323 are pretty decent though. Oh, come on. That was not emergency braking, I promise. Old Man Tater has become a member. Thank you very much, bud. Really appreciate it. Um, who have we got locomotive location livery? We are going with the third number on my screen, which will be Maxwell. How are we doing, Maxwell? I haven't seen you for a long time, bud. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Give your box number seven, guys. Ten seconds for that locomotive livery and location. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we have something that's not just darkness. Let me know your thoughts, as always. Next station on this service will be a Dinting. Uh, what do my notes say about Dinting? We've got a 40 coming up for Broad Bottom Viaduct. We'll see if we can get a flyby shot over the viaduct. <coughs> that sky does look absolutely gorgeous. <coughs> Credit where due. That that does look pretty. It does look very pretty. What are we reckoning then, guys? Um, Flo Peacock says Class 69 at Brighton. Reggie's Transport, Class 385 Ride Pierhead. Eliza, Class 465. Josh, 377 for sure at Brighton. 156 Andrew, 319 at Brighton. Pro 9, 375 at London, Victoria. Nobody has got it right. In actual fact, you are all miles. You are, you are all very, very cold. So up to 60, in a moment we will get what's known as a fixed distance signal. So a fixed distance is what you see coming up on the left. It's basically a painted distance semaphore arm in the on position. But we treat that, that board there, we treat that as a single yellow signal. So we're expecting the next one to be red. I did mention in one of the videos that there's no AWS magnet approaching this signal and I have since been told by a, a driver on the route who very kindly commented on one of my videos uh, telling me that on the dinting triangle the only magnets are at the distance not at the stop signals. So um, that is completely correct and as it should be. Green position 4 takes us round to Glossop. Main aspect would take us down to Hadfield. Position 4 takes us down to Glossop and we are 10 across the junction. Uh, old Man Tate, yeah, all the LL locomotive location liveries we've done so far have been UK based. Uh, no, I tell a lie, we did do a German one when I done one of the German streams. It is very, very atmospheric. 
And there's our 10 just as we come across the junction. So we're going to do a run in the opposite direction, guys. And I want your opinion on what you want to do. We'll go down to Glossop, Change Ends, and up to Hadfield so we complete the whole route. There is an ECS service that goes from Hadfield, empty coaching stock, straight back to Manchester Piccadilly, non-stop as empties. We can do that one, but it is in full darkness. Um, and I'm, I'm always a bit conscious about doing dark runs on streams because I don't think they look particularly good. So we can do that one, or we can jump in and do something different. We'll do a run back in the opposite direction, uh, regardless. But we can either find another dusk, sort of dusk time one. Um, or maybe we could do it in the rain or the snow or put some weather on. Let, let me know what you'd like to see. We're here to uh, to show you guys the route and get your thoughts on it. So yeah, let, let me know um, what you would like to see. Uh, SJA, can you, I send you a Portuguese one? Pity there are no Portuguese routes in the sim. I don't think there's any Portuguese routes in, in Train Sim Classic either. It'd be great to get some though. The um, the Dury Valley or the, the Vuga line would be a good one to model as well. Um, I was in Portugal a couple of weeks ago. Went to Porto Campinha and Sal Bento. Checking out some Series 1400s. Beautiful locomotives. Hey, Benio, welcome, new subscriber. Great to have you here. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Yeah, that's a good point, um, Jason. Uh, can I do this without crashing the stream, though? That is the question. Okay, um... I'm doing this quickly. Right, I'm putting a poll up, guys, because Jason had the right answer. What do you want to do next? Do you want to do the ECS run, um, which will be in the dark, a snow time run, or do you want to do a daytime run? Let me know. Happy to, happy to accommodate. We'll keep the pole up until we get down to Hadfield. <coughs> so up to 45, it is going to drop down to 10 as we come into Glossop. Uh, Phil Graham, the Glossop line DLC looks great. When does it get released? It was released today, Phil. And we've got our fixed distance there again. We treat that as one yellow. 10 mile an hour into the platform here at Glossop. Dropping a little bit of break in there. I'm a little bit early for the 10, but rather that than late. And we do have, on this route, which I'm really pleased to say, we do have working TPWS. Yes, J.A., I, I, I really like Lisbon as well. Um, this time was actually my first visit to Porto. Um, I've been to Lisbon quite a few times, but which one do I prefer? I'm, I'm, I'm non-committal at the moment. So I am going to show you the TPWS working. I am purposely going to go over the grids at more than 10, and hopefully we should get a red flashing light. Way! Working TPWS. 
Although we were doing it for demonstration purposes, that is tea and biscuits for the manager. The only thing I would pick up is that red light there is supposed to be flashing, but that's me being a rivet counter. Working TPWS, love it. Yeah, so I, I don't know if it works approaching signals and speed limits. I haven't tested it, but it certainly does work approaching buffer stops. So do keep an eye on that. We've got to wait for it to time out. Whilst we are waiting for that to time out, let's go back onto that screen. And it's our brand new feature, which is still a work in progress. Spot, drive or scrap. This is still a work in progress, guys. I'm going to put three pictures on the screen, and I want you to tell me which one you would spot... Which one you'd drive, and which one you completely hate and you would be happy to scrap. Spot, drive or scrap. We've got the class 67 there, the class 700, and the class 165. Let me know, which one would you spot, which one would you drive, and which one would you scrap, and why? Okay, our TPWS has reset, so we can continue towards buffer stops. Incidentally, if you have a TPWS activation approaching buffer stops, you do not need to contact the signaller before moving your train. You can move your train towards the buffer stops, stop the train, and then contact the signaller. That's the only time you can move your train after a TPWS activation without reporting it first. Unlock doors. Okay, so cab shutdown procedure. Step three. CRA, neutral, tail lights on. How have we done? How have we done? Scrap the 700, says DE Tree Trains. Reggie's Transport, spot the 67. A train's well from Berkshire, drive the 165, spot the 67, and scrap the 700. There's not much love for the 700. Maxwell's given us some love for the 700. Scrap the lot, Northern Princess Productions. Okay, if we return to free roam to work this service round to Hadfield, the problem you've got now is... Check we got reds on the back we have. We are a 21.35 departure. The AI is going to take this train before I can get up there. Ha, got ya. <laughs> Just about made it. Okay, uh, <laughs> safety system's in. Doors were already shut. We are good to go. We're off to Hadfield. LWL, spot the 67, drive the 700, scrap the 165. Sandbrook, 700 would be fun to drive. Penguin, 700, most modern, so probably the nicest to drive. So we'll run this round to Hadfield, uh, and then I will have a quick look at the poll to see what we are doing next. If you haven't cast your votes, do you want to see the ECS move, the snow move, or a daytime run? Do let me know. Formula 47, 700 doesn't appeal and doesn't make any good noises. GJ Barnard, spot the 67, drive the 166, and scrap the 700. Not much love for the German trains. SJA, Devil's Advocate, 700, drive, lovely big windscreen, and you get to learn a bit about ATO through the Thames Core. 67, spot, because it's a loco, and it hurts my heart, but scrap the 165. Scrap the 165. There is our fixed distance, so we need to treat that as one yellow. Expect the next signal to be at danger. Formula 47, uh, it's, I believe it's a 165. Um, 
Yes, definitely a 165. Definitely a 165. Would that change your opinion, Formula 47, if it was a, a 166? So position four takes us around to Hadfield. Main aspect would take us back into Dinting and then round to Manchester Piccadilly. I do like the sky colours though. That that is pretty. So if you're doing the changing ends move and the AI decides it's going to take the train and you don't get up there in time, uh, you can just go back into the main menu. The, the uh, timetable service is divided into part one and part two. There's the ten. Timetable services are divided into part one and part two. Um, so you can just go back into the main menu and load up part two. The other way of doing it is to leave the back cab door open. If you leave the back cab door open, run to the front, take over the train, then run to the back and close the back cab door. That will also work. Wookie 390. We haven't had a round of locomotive location livery for a little while. So, yeah, let's, let's do one. Post your numbers now. For locomotive livery location. I'll have your numbers between 1 and 25, please. It, it seems that Dovetail are doing quite a good job recently. Because the last route I think we had was Peak Forest. And that was really, really well received. And then they brought out Glossop, which has been pretty well received. I've not seen a, a huge amount of criticism for it. Um, it. It seems that things are going in the right direction. What do people think about the in-guarding scenario? We, I, I have made a video on that. I don't know. I've seen the British Ace and Megasim have also done videos on it um, and other content creators as well. But what do you guys make of the, the on-guard scenario uh, where you have to do the guarding? be interested to hear your thoughts on that. Right, what have we got? The third number on my screen is Pig and... No, my apologies. It's not. It's Alcoholic. Number 13. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Box number 13, guys. 10 seconds, please. Locomotive Livery and Location. What does that give you? Does that help you? As always, guys, let me know your thoughts on that in the chat. Fifteen coming up, and then round into Hadfield. Uh, Richard, I liked it, but it was way too short. Northern Princess Productions. Overall, it's a thumbs up for me. I want more of it, but a deeper experience. That's fair play. Uh, Joshua, I tried that scenario today. Sam, would also be nice if... It let you use the GOPs. Do you mean the guard the guard operator panels at the doors? I don't know if the 323... A couple of people have mentioned this to me. Does the 323 have guard panels at the doors, like Electrostars and other stock, or is it rear cab only? I, I believe, from my knowledge, the guard panels are rear cab only. Um, but I'm happy to be corrected. What are we reckoning? Formula 47, GBRF 73. Definitely not. Joshua Atkins, 323. Jason, blue for Northern. Rowan, 158 Northern. Uh, Sir Big Cookie. We'll say that with care. Class 258, Scott Row, Edinburgh, Waverley. Penguin, that's hard. DT, Northern 769. LW, Scott's Rail. Scott, Scott's Rail. Scott Rail. Class 158, North Queensfree. Northern Princess, 158, Scott Row at Inverness. D3 Northern 769. Sussex Rail Enthusiast is going for 158 at Grimsby. Uh, 2809 Lewis. Pretty sure it's 158 at Hull as I signed both. Lots of varied opinion at the moment on this one. It's, it's certainly been a bit uh, divisive tonight. 
Okay, we are at Hadfield. Break step three. D R A in and into neutral. And reds up and off. No, it's not going to let me do the off. Gold medal attempt. Fantastic. Okay, guys, right. Let's have a quick look at this poll. What are we doing? Looking at the poll, 28% of you want the ECS move, 43% want to see a snowy drive, and 29% want a daytime run. So let's end the poll there. We are going to do Glossop in the snow, which I think is a pretty good call. So, return to timetable. Johnny Simulator Game in Northern 319 Manchester Piccadilly. Uh, Sam Brooks, it's just a bit unrealistic to be checking tickets then sprinting back to the cab. Yeah, I, I, I do get that with the guard mode, Sam. It's, I think it's conceptual. And I'm, I'm hoping something that is you, you, something you're going to get in like the free roam mode. Uh, Simon Fisher, from what I've seen, the guard mode looks very like, much like proof of concept. Yeah, to A, see if it works, B, see how many people use it and understand if it's worth development. Yeah, no, I... I, I yeah, I completely agree with you. Okay, guys, so what we'll do, we won't do the Hadfield round to Glossop bit because that's a bit slow. But we'll do a Glossop back to Manchester. Um, we'll do... an early-ish morning sort of run. 6.13 in the morning? No, nah, it's still going to be dark, isn't it, when we've got snow on. Let's go for a half... Yeah. Hadfield to Manchester Piccadilly Part 2. I've already played that one. Is that cheating? Let's do it again. Okay, let's put it back to February. And we'll just... Snowstorm or light snow? Ah, uh, let's go all out. Let's put it on snowstorm. Drive this northern service from Glossop to Manchester Piccadilly. Uh, opinion on a TikTok creator breaking into a train cab. I've not seen that one, but it's certainly not, certainly not something I, I condone doing. It's snowing! Right, okay. Let's get the train set up. Normal, 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 normal. TPWS, normal. Okay. Key in. Into neutral. Uh, lights are already done. Doors. And we need some wipers as well going on. Um, cap heat, yep, definitely. Uh, where's our wiper control? Slow. I haven't done my door key. That's why the doors are not working. Let's try again. So we'll do this run down to Manchester, guys. And that will be the end of the stream today. Um, because I have to go and drive some real trains at 2 o'clock in the morning. So sleep is a good idea. Although I did sleep this afternoon. So I have been, I have been responsible. Right, where are we stopping? We are stopping at Dinting, Broadbottom, Hattersley, Godley, Newton for Hyde, Flowerfield, Guidebridge, Ashbury's, and Manchester Piccadilly. Now, the problem is, although I have said I'm making a route learning video going in this direction, obviously I've done the one in the other direction, I haven't yet worked out the breaking points in this direction, so I don't have any notes. So this is going to be a more interesting sort of drive. So hopefully, hopefully it'll all work out okay. Um, yeah, Dino Miller, fault trains didn't function in the snow. You're quite right. We should just pack up and go home now. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, Don Key, country comes to a standstill in the snow. Norman Prince, I'm fairly sure it's the guy who broke into people's houses for a prank and now he's been arrested. Is that the guy in America? Uh, Northern Princess Productions. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not good, is it? Right, we are off to Dinting.
yeah, Formula... <laughs> Speeding immediately. Um, Formula 47, yeah, I, I would agree with you. Um, this route seems like great value for money, opinions. I, I think it's been well priced. I think 19.99 for the length of the route is a good price point. I think a year ago, this probably would have been like a, a you know, 14.99 route, but obviously price of everything's gone up. And don't forget guys, if you do own the cross city line, you do get a 10% loyalty discount on the route as well, which is uh, which is nice of Dovetail to have done that. No, he is British DET. Oh, okay. Jason, you saw nothing. You saw nothing. I tell you what guys, we've got 116 of you lovely people in. I have got a special treat for you all. This is courtesy of um, Maxwell. Maxwell Wind Shepherd, who is in the chat. This is courtesy of Maxwell. This is a special treat for you all. Hopefully this is going to work. If you see something that doesn't look right, report it to a member of staff or text the British Transport Police on 61016. See it, say it, sort it. <laughs> Emotional damage! It had to be done. Thanks for uploading that, Max. Sam, sadly no discount if on PlayStation. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I was under the impression that there was Sam. <laughs> it's a special treat for all of you, that is. Gotta green. So we're 25 all the way around, then we drop to 10 just before dinting. In a way, and I did say this in my route review video, I think that the the Train Sim World free routes look better in weather. If you've got snow, or if you've got um, rain, or if you've got like the nighttime lighting. I sometimes find the daytime lighting can look a little bit too... Um, too bright and everything can look a little bit washed out. I don't think it's overly realistic, but I think when you've got weather and you've got effects turned on, I think it looks really, really nice. There is R10. Uh, Richard Elkin, I got a reduction on PlayStation, $17.99, but you need PS Plus. Ah, there you go. Hey, Fish Barriers123, hello. Oliver Fry, old phones, Roblox, how tos, and more. Do Preston to Blackpool North. I don't think we've got Preston to Blackpool North in game. Actually, in fact, I know we haven't got Preston to Blackpool North in game. Um, so that would be a little bit tricky. We are free for the free here at Dinting. In the absence of a stop car marker, we go all the way to the end of the platform. And it is an offside door release, so getting up and pressing the button on the offside is a good thing to do. Uh, Northern Princess Productions, it's coming soon. What is? Preston to Blackpool North. Graham, the scenery looks great. The windows look very fake, though. Oh, okay. Uh, Formula 47, yeah, and that's exactly what I, I was saying there. The immersion is improved in weather and the lighting is fantastic. You can just see on the top of the trees there, the sun's starting to poke through. That, yeah. I am a fan. Let's go. Let's put the reverser into forward. That does always help. We are off. Ten miles an hour only. Loving the flange squeal.
kids playing in the field below. Brilliant. I'd not noticed that before. I like that. Bit of sp oh, sparking and arcing on the pantograph there. We have another fixed distance signal. And like I said, I am going to have to leave the... I'm going to have to leave the HUD on. In this direction, because I haven't done my route learning on it yet. Uh, train Central, what's your favourite train sim world free route? Do you know what? It's... Probably between this and southeastern high speed, if I'm being honest, or cross city. Um, favorite route overall on train sim has got to be the London to the the London commuter, Brighton to London. But train sim, that's the train sim world two route. Train sim world three route. It's southeast between southeast and high speed in this. Is that a new sound? Yeah, DET. I, I've not noticed that one before. It does sound quite good. I feel a little bit guilty because in my review video I mentioned about the soundscape and I think they, they could do a lot more work with the soundscape and the more I play it the more I keep hearing new sounds and I'm like Ooh, maybe they have done work on the soundscape and I'm just ignorant to it so yeah. Where, where are we reckoning is a breaking point for Broadbottom. From 60 going downhill. It is snowing as well. We're going to get the brakes in probably a lot earlier than we need to be. There's a 40 there. Uh, Formula 47. By the way, it's jointed tracks, so the noise it makes are extremely accurate. Uh, Formula 47, yes, it is a Train Sim World 2 route. However, it was updated for Train Sim World 3. So you didn't have the Ashford bit on there and you didn't have the um, Dartford bit. So the whole route was revamped up to Train Sim World 3 standard. So it takes advantage of all the new uh, Train Sim World 3 features. We've still managed to be 30 seconds late. The, t the timings on this route are pretty tight. You do need to be right on it with your braking points. But to be fair, if the weather was like it is today and I was driving in real life, the timetable kind of goes out the window a little bit because I'm going to drive to the conditions, not the timetable. That, that applies every day of the week, really. We are free on the S. Doors on the left. Let's play the game. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Formula 47, I call that an excuse, Richard, as it was originally... I, I can't argue, it was it definitely was originally a Train Sim World 2 route. SJA, London Commuter is my fave overall Train Sim World route, but personal bias, I've been on it countless times. Cross City is very good. Yeah, see, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Cross City and, and the 3T3 because the first train team I ever played properly was um, Open BVE. And there was a guy called, I think it was Anthony Bowden, who created Cross City South for, for BVE back in the day. And that kind of was the go-to standard for train sim routes. So I, I played that to death. And I, I'm really, really pleased when I got to do that one in Train Sim World. Can you look at the town over the trees? You can, yes. Off to Hattersley, which is an offside door release. Okay, locomotive location livery. We are going with the third number on my screen, as always, which happens to be Pig and Bob. Number 18.
So when we're driving in snowy conditions, it's not really going to affect us too much today. But when we're driving in snowy conditions, it, uh, we want to be making a 50% brake application every 3 to 5 minutes and observing a reduction in speed of around 10 miles an hour. And the reason we do that is because snow and ice can build up in the brake rigging and then you apply the brakes and nothing happens. It's more of a problem on... Um, locomotive hauled stock and, and freight wagons and coaching stock than it is on multiple units um, but the idea is by putting the brakes on every three to five minutes you're just keeping the brake rigging warm keeping it free of snow and ice um, and making sure it keeps working I and mean, if you consider going up the west coast mainline with a freight train if you're doing 75 mile an hour for you know two hours and you don't touch the brakes time you come to put the brakes on everything could be absolutely frozen solid under there so you put the brakes on and nothing happens um, and yeah, that, that's going to be a, a change your underwear kind of situation, I think. Okay, guys, Pig and Bob, number 18. Let's play. Let's play. Locomotive livery location. Box number 18 is a good shout. Going to give you that one, guys. 10 seconds for that locomotive livery and locomotive <laughs> Does that help at all? That blue livery could be one of two operators, maybe. What do you reckon the traction is? What do you reckon the location is? We are off to Godly. Let's go. Grape juice. Scott Rail 156 or Northern. Oh, okay. Simon Fisher, you'd been looped long before you could run two hours. <laughs> Regis Transport Videos, 158 Northern, Grape Juice Northern, Formula 47 Northern 158. Jackpot, that is very generous of you. Thank you very much, bud. Class 390 at Corby. Eliza, Scott Rail, Scott Rail 158. Callum is going Scott Rail 158 at Edinburgh. Uh, 2809 Lewis, I'm still saying Northern 158 at Hull. DT is going Northern 158. Yeah, thanks very much, Jack. Very generous for you, my friend. There's a lot of people going for Northern 158s. Grape Juice is going for Glasgow Scott Rail. Formula 47, that's Northern Blue, I think. Ooh. I like the way that when it starts slipping, it cuts out the regen braking and goes straight onto full friction. We do appear to be experiencing a little bit of WSP activity there as well. Oh, okay. That's... Is that a new thing? I've never had that on Train Sim before, I don't think. That could be me, but I don't think I've had WSP activity on train sim before. Doors on the left. Grape juice. Wait, if it was Scott Rail, it would have those dots on the livery, so it can't be Scott Rail, so it has to be Northern 156 or 158. Let's try again. Post your numbers now. For locomotive livery location. Hey, Sujat, how are we doing, bud? What's WSP? Wheel slide protection. It's the railway equivalent of ABS in your car. So if the wheels are going to lock up, rather than allowing to wheel, the wheels to lock up, the train will automatically release the brakes on individual axles to keep the wheels turning. It, it's very similar to, um, to ABS on a car. We are off to Newton for Hyde. We have one yellow up ahead. Hopefully that's going to step up before we get there. Uh, we have got 100 of you lovely people still watching today. If you haven't already, please, please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing, guys. Really does help me out and helps out the, uh, the YouTube algorithms. One yellow. Okie dokie. We'll worry about this red signal. Red ahead. We 
we'll worry about this station stop, then the red signal, um, and then we'll do our locomotive location livery, which will be Wookie 390 with box number 12. The WSP is, is pretty good. The low adhesion conditions, I like it. <coughs> okay guys, we do need to set our DRA. Because the previous signal was one yellow and we have no starting signal provided, the rulebook mandates that we have to set the DRA. There's a very real danger. You could pull away from this station, forget that your last signal was one yellow, come around the corner and you have a spad, which we definitely don't want to happen. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay, Wookie 390 has requested box number 12. Here we go, guys. 10 seconds, Locomotive Location. And Livery, please. Are you any the wiser? Let me know your thoughts on that. Okay, we can take our DRA off. Into forward. And here is where, like I say, you've got a real risk of spadding the next signal. Uh, we have got a station before the next signal, which is Flowery Field. Typically, you would only accelerate in no more than 50% power because you are accelerating towards a red signal. It's very easy in this time now to become distracted. The radio, the GSMR radio could go off. The signal could contact you. Um, you know, there could be distractions on the line side. You could have temporary speed restrictions. You could have the passenger alarm going off. There's a million and one things that could distract you and distract your attention from that red signal. So you just keep focusing on the red ahead. The red signal ahead of you is, is your priority. That's where your focus needs to be up until the point that you stop at that signal. And there is flowery fields just ahead of us there. Flipper 158 at Carlisle. Wookie Northern 150 at Manchester Piccadilly. Just in time, 158 Manchester Piccadilly. Uh, Lee Roblox, class 165 at Crewe. Flowery field, stopping at the end of the platform. Again, guys, brake step free, DRA and neutral because the previous signal was one yellow. I wouldn't mind betting, and I'd have to check the, the, the operational notice, but I wouldn't mind betting that the next signal has been passed at danger more than once or twice um, because there is a real possibility of forgetting that your last signal was a single yellow. Dad Rao, where are you driving tomorrow? I am going to New Haven tomorrow. Guide Bridge is our next station stop. Into forward. DRA off. Red ahead. Power notch 2. No more than 50% power. Focusing on the red ahead. Phil Graham, is it a 158 in Northern livery at Preston? Maxwell, one five. I think, I think one person has actually got this right tonight. I think, I think I've seen one person has managed to get this right. Next signal is green. We have about 10, 15 minutes maybe of this stream left today, ladies and gentlemen. We will play locomotive location delivery a couple more times. See if we can get some right answers. Okay, the lighting just done funny things. And suddenly it was daylight.
Yeah, Suja, it's, it's definitely quite a bit of distance between the signals there. You're not wrong there. Just in time. Oh, 158 at Glossop. I don't recall this game physic before. The, 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 the slipping. I've had slipping on, on taking power, but not on breaking. This is... It's good. I like it. It's realistic. Guide Bridge, Platform 1. It's a Ying box. Have we got a dry wipe sound as well now? Listen. Was that always a thing? I, I'm discovering lots of things that I didn't know were a thing. Was that always a thing? <laughs> Off to Ashbury's. Slipping on braking happens on LGV. Ah, oh, okay. Right. Let's do... I tell you what, guys. Let's do another... Let's do another one. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Excuse me. Okay, guys, locomotive delivery location Sandy Beach. Somewhere I would absolutely love to be or have been over the last couple of days because it has been baking. Number two. Let's play locomotive livery location. Go for number two, guys. Does that help you with your location there? Uh, we're not stopping here. This is Fairfield, I believe. Uh, Formula 47, I believe the train service on this route um, is every half an hour in real life. Green ahead. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm gonna have to give you some squares to help you out with this one. Let's guys. play. Locomotive livery location. Do you know what I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you 25 down at the bottom right. <coughs> I'm gonna give you a number one as well. Let me know if that helps at all.
Yeah, no worries, DET. Thank you very much for joining us, bud. Really appreciate it. And thanks for your uh, continued support with your membership. See, LWRL's gone for ScotRail 158 at Dundee. Uh, Johnny Simulator Gaming has gone Northern 158. So we seem to be quite unanimous on the fact it's a 158, but nobody seems to want to commit to whether it's a ScotRail or a Northern. What are we reckoning, guys, simply on simply on livery? Is that ScotRail or is that Northern? More people going Northern than ScotRail at the moment. Great juice, it's Northern. Coming in towards Ashbury's now. Not Scott Row livery, says Maxwell. Johnny Simulator, it's Northern. Definitely Northern. Northern, Northern. Northern, Northern, Northern. Northern Princess, I'm like 95% sure it's Scott Row. Nor uh, Northern Princess Productions, what makes you think it's Scott Row? What makes you go against the grain? Free on the free. We've got one more station to settle this. Deserves a poll. 100% not Scott Rail, says Johnny Simulator Gaming. Let's do another one. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Ah, yeah, but grape juice, if we get the dots, we know it's Scott Rail. Maybe I've positioned the picture in such a way where the dots are hidden. Or maybe it is a northern. Is it definitely a 158 as well? Is Are you, are you definitely sure it's a 158? Oh, the lighting is doing really weird things. That's That's a bit disappointing. That's twice now we've had jumps in the lighting conditions. It just breaks the immersion a little bit when, when that happens. It's just irritating. Sussex Rail Enthusiast. X Northern 158 that's now Scott Rail. Incidentally, guys, if you go on my YouTube shorts, you will now find a locomotive location livery in short video format. There is a there is one on there which is a Southern 171. But nobody's got the location right because at the time it was not a southern train. It was an East Midlands train in southern livery. Round the corner through... Trying to get the name of the junction. Ardwick. Green and an E. Already down for the 35. 25 coming up. Uh, Johnny Simulator Gaming, you're the third number with number 17. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. I'll give you 17. I love the way the signals pop. The signals really stand out. This now is an error. I'm 99% sure this is an error. So this signal is green with platform 2 indicator. I don't think this signal is capable of showing a green aspect in real life because our next signal is effectively the red on the buffer stops. So I don't think that should be green. I think that should be one yellow. And we are going to have one more round of locomotive location livery. So let's press the button. Get your numbers in now. Post your numbers now 
for locomotive livery location. Grape juice is not sure if it's a 156 or a 158. This has been the most challenging one to date. Thank you very much, Loco Class 66, for um, sending this to me earlier today. And we want to make sure we're down to under 10 for those TPWS grids. Slight downhill gradient here as well, so 0.2%. It is rolling up ever so slightly, but not too much. And stopping six foot away from those buffer stops. Uh, undoubtedly a 158 top is tapered unlike on a 156 as uh, Northern Princess Productions. Six foot from the buffer stops. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Brake set free. DRA neutral. Doors on the left. Tail lights on. Headlights off. And wipers off, of course. How have we done? Little bit of speeding there. Are we on a gold medal attempt? That is the question. Hopefully we are... I've, I've already done it. I've already got a medal for that one. That's why it's not giving me it, isn't it? Okay, guys. Right, so our last reveal on this is going to be LW Rail with number 16. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Going to give you number 16. This might help you with the location. <laughs> It is quite a challenging one. I'll give you that. It's, I'll give you number 15 as well, guys. I just want to see if anyone can get this. And I'm going to give you... I'm going to be generous. I'm going to give you number 20. That is a challenging one today. That is a challenging one. We thinking another 158 to the left Johnny Simulator Northern 158 Huddersfield Eliza 158 Northern Liverpool Central LWL Northern 158 Huddersfield okay ladies and gentlemen the only person to have got this correct after about the third guess it's it's there again Northern Princess Productions. It's time to reveal today's locomotive livery location. There are the dots. There are the dots. They were hiding. <laughs> there are the there are the Scott Rail dots. Northern Princess Productions. You are a hundred percent right. Scott Rail, class one five eight, at Inverness. That is probably the best one of that. I tell you what. I tell you what. Do you know what? Let's find the right button. Let's find the right button. Northern Princess Productions. <laughs> Deserves a round of applause. That was probably one of the best ones of those we've had in a long time. That was the congratulations to absolutely everyone. That, that was that was really, really good. And if you want to play more location, if you want to play more locomotive location livery, then head over to the uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash dad I'm sure you knew that. Click on the shorts feed and there's six or seven uh, locomotive location livery games on there for you to play in short form video format. So do go and check those out. Okay, we are going to wrap it up very quickly. CEO of the class 700. You've been waiting very patiently, and thank you very much for reminding me. So, excuse my spelling and my writing. These are these are my notes. So, that's the service I was on. These are the sectional appendix references, if you've got access to the sectional appendix. And this is basically the way I make my notes on the route. So, Piccadilly, up east, 15 miles an hour, E on the theatre box. 25.35, 25.35. 
Next thing we've got on the route is Ardwick Junction, lines to Crewe, Chester and Stoke. We've then got Ardwick Station where the line speed goes up to 40, Ardwick Depot on the left, Ashbury West Junction, line from Staley Bridge, and Manchester Vic, freight only question mark. Hold 40 mile an hour, step one at the 60 board, Ashbury's. That I, I literally do it as, as kind of as kind of bullet points. So it's a case of it's almost like an instruction manual for driving the route, if you like. So it's gonna, I'm going to do this at this point, this at this point, this at this point, this at that point. And in terms of actually working out the, the braking points, what I do is I go into the route and I just drive it. And on the approach to every station, I save the game. And then if I haven't got the braking point quite right, I can go and load it from the previous station and just keep doing that until I get the braking points kind of, um, kind of roughly worked out. So there we go. Thank you very, very, very... I s Northern Princess Productions cheated. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh. I gave you a round of applause and everything. Come on, come on. That's not fair. Anyway, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. It's been a really good stream. Um, I would recommend this route. It is good. It is good. Um, there's a lot going on. It's a nice length. It's a good one to learn and get your head around. So, so for me, yeah. Glossop is good, Train uh, Dovetail done really well on this, this route, so um, if you can, do go and pick up a copy. I am going to be live again later on in the week, possibly Friday, um, but do keep an eye on my socials and I will tell you 20 minutes before I go live, as usual. If you want to check my socials, you can do, there's a link in the description below. Um, and you're also very welcome to join our Discord server. You'll find a, a invitation link for Discord in the description below as well. 87 of you lovely people still here at the end of the stream, which is brilliant. If you haven't already, please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. I'm going to press that button there. That is going to cut to the old school end of stream screen that I have yet to revamp. Thank you very, very, very much for watching, guys. Thoughts and opinions on the route. Welcome in the comments section below. And I shall see you.